Hello everyone. A very good evening to one and all present here. On the behalf of Team Footprints, I Krishna Patel, the core committee member of Footprints, welcomes you all. First of all, we would like to thank our vital sponsor IMS and Kaleidoscope sponsor Excel for their support. After the completion of two guest lectures, today we are with our third guest speaker, Avala Rai sir, who started his entrepreneurial journey at the age of 19. He is the managing director at Kolkata Ventures and director at ECC Engineering. He has built many successful businesses in the US and India. He is a board advisor at Comedy Munch and has served as startup advisor to Prime Minister of Nepal. He applies Bhagavad Gita lessons in business. I request you all of you to keep patience during the session. We are circulating one form in the chat box. If you have any query to ask, sir, you can fill that form and you are free to ask any questions. So we have Avala Roy, sir, with us. Welcome you, sir. Uh, now I request Avala Roy, sir, to take this stage. Uh, sir, can we start the session now? Yes, let's do it. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Krishna, for your nice introduction and very grateful to be here. Um, so let me just quickly share my screen. Okay. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, sir. it's visible. Okay, cool. All right. So I'll, I've been told to talk a little bit about myself, uh, some of the things I've done as well as talk about startups, Bhagavad Gita, spirituality. So I thought I'll name it success mantra, uh, the, the things that, uh, you know, what you guys want to achieve. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, write those questions in the chat section. And any, uh, you know, once I, I'm done, maybe half an hour I'll speak. And then for the rest of the time, I'll be answering your questions. All right, so I started at your age while I was a student at the Illinois of Technology. Here you can see pictures of uh, my student startup days with my friends in college. Um, we won the Entrepreneur Idol, which is like American Idol or Indian Idol, which is for music. This is for entrepreneurs. Uh, we won 14 business plan competitions. And then with that money, we were able to build our prototype. We were able to build a team and uh, move forward you know, we won uh, competitions in US and Canada and then get mentored by uh, people who are billionaires and millionaires. Like at the bottom, you see on the right hand side, uh, the, the CEO of at the time, Motorola, as well as Nokia uh, and people like that. So, uh, you know, it was fun building my own company while in college and then eventually uh, building a team because it's all about the people that make your business successful or anything successful in life. It's the people. It's not technology. It's not uh, your idea. It's actually the people. So uh, we were very fortunate that even though we were teenagers at the time, 19 year old, uh, we were able to get some of the best minds, uh, uh, you know, in, in every segment. So marketing wise, we got somebody from L'Oreal, somebody from Wrigley, Motorola, all these amazing people got together to work with us. They had everything, you know, the big cars, the beach houses and all the good stuff. And we had nothing, but they saw the vision. They saw what we were building and they came on board. And together we have built these companies in US, Canada, Hong Kong, China, and India. So I came back to India in 2016, uh, started Kolkata Ventures and Kolkata Ventures has been my passion project, which uh, has led to more than 450 revenue generating startups with 4,500 new jobs created in the uh, in East India and other parts of India. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, it's been a wonderful journey and I am dedicated now uh, after building these businesses, my focus now has been to build more entrepreneurs and build India uh, really to help all of you, the next generation of entrepreneurs succeed so that we can all succeed as a, as a country. Uh, I've been honored by the California State Senate and state legislature uh, for my contribution. I've done four TED Talks. So since we're talking about success, I'm just talking a little bit about the things that uh, people think uh, make you successful uh, and the kind of things I do and by God's grace that has been uh, made possible. Um, 
And like I said, with Kolkata Ventures being a wonderful uh, journey, it still continues to be a wonderful experience with all of you, uh, you know, young uh, entrepreneurs coming together and the best of the, the entrepreneurs helping these young entrepreneurs. So we have uh, entrepreneurs helping entrepreneurs. There's no consultants, no professors, no uh, people who only have built businesses from zero to million plus are, are the people who help our startups. And many of them are professionals also from big companies like Nokri.com, OLX, Snapdeal, uh, Oyo, Ola, et cetera. But uh, majorly it's entrepreneurs helping entrepreneurs. That's what we do. And that's why we have a lot of success stories. These have already been funded. Uh, startups, uh, the rest are making 10 lakhs or above every month. You know, I've also been asked by the government of India to to help the startup India uh, startups. So this is in Rashtrapati Bhavan, in fact, in Delhi, uh, where uh, you know I was invited to mentor literally 200 plus startups. Um, and then I was sent from the government to the Prime Minister of Nepal to build the ecosystem in Kathmandu so that entrepreneurs in Nepal and also the same opportunity as entrepreneurs in India, as entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley in the US. So, so my journey has been pretty uh, you know, amazing in that way, because when I was building my startup, uh, President Obama came into power in 2008, and I was engaged in Startup America to build the startup ecosystem. 2009, you know, if you remember, that time recession happened, and people were losing jobs. So Obama was pushing for entrepreneurship so job creators rather than uh you know because he knew if we could create job creators and one person could create at least 10 jobs you know that way it would amplify the same thing happened when i came to india in 2016 modi ji started startup india and then uh, right after that as uh, prime minister only came into power he did startup nepal and that's been also uh, going forward so uh, i i love sharing what i have Right. So that's been through my journey, building my businesses, making money, but also sharing uh, and helping other entrepreneurs get to the level uh, that I have come and beyond, you know, better than me. Uh, so I also educate entrepreneurs in six IITs, three IMs and two U.S. universities. <clears throat> um, I love student interactions like, you know, what I'm doing with you. I've been to Gujarat, too, actually, in Anand. Uh, I was uh, speaking at a few universities there. Uh, before the pandemic. Uh, so, so I do interact a lot with students. I love uh, helping students. I hire student uh, interns also. So if anybody out there intelligent have a lot of uh, talent, uh, do, do get in touch with me on Instagram or LinkedIn and we can talk. Uh, I've been named as one of the most influential youth icons in India uh, and, you know, doing my little bit to help uh, the, the youths so these are all, all things that I do, you know, inaugurate programs, you know, lighting the candle and all of that. Uh, and that's not what I am all about. I am actually about building business and educating and all that. But these are things that come as a part of the lifestyle. You know, when you when people know that you do good stuff, people invite you to be part of the lifestyle. And, and you know, I want to encourage to so hear, you know, giving uh, cash prices to successful uh, startup entrepreneurs who are who've proven some value that you know what I can do this so so helping them through uh, that process also helping the government uh, shape policies so that people like you can have a better future going ahead you know things that were not present during my time but can be present for you so I, I work extensively with the Indian government to make sure that your futures are are bright and of course, you know, I get talked about in the news media uh, for what I do. And so what I'm going to share with you, the point of showcasing my so-called success was to just to give you a little bit of encouragement that what you're listening to is not Einstein's story or Gandhi's story. It's my story. And whatever little success I've seen, I'm going to share with you from that angle. And my success actually is rooted in none other but the Bhagavad Gita. You know, that's what my foundation is. That's what I live uh, to share. And one of the biggest things that any leader, whether you're an entrepreneur or uh, anything else that you do, there are many paths to success. And there's always dilemma. Should I take this path or that path? And that's the one question you will see from, 
your life with the from ideation stage to till you die you know that what should i do how should i make a decision and the short answer is you get help only when you ask for it you don't have to speculate you don't have to um you know tear your hair and and figure things out google doesn't have all the answers google will show you what you want to hear that's how the search engine algorithm works but what's more important is for you to find mentors who can answer the questions whether you like it or not but the real answers right and that's what arjun did in the battle of kurukshetra uh, when he saw the army on the other side and he saw familiar faces bhishma dev you know his his uncles his brothers his teachers all of these people that he knew he grew up with he had to kill them he didn't want to do it so he's like what should i do should i run away to the himalayas krishna please stop being my friend become my teacher tell me what to do and krishna takes on the role of a teacher and delivers the first motivational speech in history called the bhagavad gita right 45 minutes krishna spoke arjun understood and they were ready to roll arjun was at the end karishe vachanam tava that i have understood what you said and i'll do what you say i will fight for the right reasons life is about fighting there's always wars right uh, and sometimes we choose to fight sometimes we don't choose to fight but the thing is imagine what would happen on your deathbed when you're about to leave your body do you want regrets or do you want memories right i get inspired in the middle of the night uh, on twitter if you follow me on twitter you probably know this uh, you know i i write i tweet in the middle of the night inspiration comes to me and this is like 1:30 am i wrote it is better to die with memories than dreams when you're on your deathbed imagine yourself right it's much better when you can relive all the wonderful things you have done and you lived your life to the fullest versus man i had the opportunity but i didn't do it or oh, i had that opportunity i didn't do it or oh, i could have done that but only if i had a little bit of courage maybe i could have pushed through much better than that is to have the wonderful dreams that you know what i used my time to the fullest i'm happy and i'm satisfied like i'm in my 30s now looking back in my 20s i feel satisfied only one mistake i did i was invited to shark tank i rejected that offer suggested by my advisors so what mistake but other than that my 20s have been pretty awesome and i feel powerful that you know what mistakes i did but you know what the best i could do with my time and energy is what i did and there comes now how do you move from the average lifestyle to the lifestyle of change makers success and all of that that you hear a lot of speakers would be speaking about motivational talk you know uh so here is how it starts it starts with disgust decide and desire right you you either the government sucks or society sucks or you know whatever you have heard from your parents and grandparents you don't agree with them whatever it might be you feel ah too much i want to change all this right that's where it all starts disgust decide and you desire to resolve to create a compelling vision i want to have a life better than my parents i want to have life better than my grandparents i want to live the dream right and based on that you create a vision there's a the kind of car i want there's a the kind of person i want to marry there's a the kind of place i want to live in there's a the kind of house i want there's a the kind of salary or or earnings i want on a monthly basis right this is the kind of life you create that vision when i ask a young person hey what do you want to achieve in life well, i want to be happy what is happiness to you well success doing good to others how much good do you want to do to others i don't know well, you know i want a nice house i want to do some charity what is some charity i don't know so that's the problem right that's where the problem is average people don't know what they want extraordinary successful people actually have always known what they want and they've been working on that trajectory to that goal if you were to you're in uh, gujarat right you decide to come to calcutta you won't say that i want to go to east i don't know where i'm going and get to the train station or plane you know air, uh, airport you would buy the ticket book the hotel take a cab go to the airport or the train station get on the right train or plane and head to kolkata correct that's how specific you need to be to reach your goal your destination if you don't have that destination guess what you're going nowhere you just go to stay 
uh, staring at the planes and trains and wondering which one should I take. And that's when you get like confusion in life and then midlife crisis comes in and one day you die confused. I don't know what I did with my life, right? So it's important to create a compelling vision. I want this car, this model. This is the price of that car. I have to earn this much to afford this car. I want this kind of a person. I want to live in this kind of a house. I want to earn this much money. You, be, you have to be specific. By what date? Empowered with the deadline. Based on that, break that down, act on it every day and small victories every day. Whatever that compelling vision is, break it down. You wake up in the morning, you write down your to-do list and you decide, here's one, two, three things I will do today to achieve that car, that house, that life, that happiness that I desire. And, you know, by God's grace, I hope I deserve. Right. And when you do that, every day you're moving towards that goal. Otherwise, every day you're moving sideways, not front. Right. You're doing a lot of things, but you're not moving towards your goal. Unless you have a goal, you're not moving anywhere. So this part is very, very important. Small changes every day is sustainable. Generally, what happens? We hear a motivational speaker, we're like, Chalo karte hai. life ko change kar denge, and we will do something, you know, start up karenge, ye karenge, wo karenge. And then what happens, right? After two days, you're like, project, oh, this and that, oh, mom's sick or something, somebody's birthday party, oh, chalo, baad mein karenge. And suddenly your motivation kind of fizzles out, right? So that's not sustainable. You do a lot and then you fizzle out. Sustainable is a little bit every day, no matter what is happening. Even if you're in the hospital, even if somebody you love is, is, has left the planet, doesn't matter. Every day you do something little towards your goal. That adds up over time. That's the compounding effect. That's what people uh, who are successful, that's what they do, regardless of what. It's part of your daily habit, your daily ritual. You brush your teeth no matter what. You drink water no matter what. You eat food no matter what. You shower no matter what. Okay, college students don't shower much. But, uh, you know, you get what I'm saying. But so with your dream, with your startup, with whatever you want to build, it has to be the similar way. No matter what you do, what you need to do every day. But before that, you need to know who you are. We are, most human beings are dissected into two parts, Right. Some are more strong on the left brain side. Some are more strong on the right brain side. Um, right brain side tends to be more on the creative. You know, if you're a Instagram Reels, TikToker, you know, blogger, YouTuber, um, guitarist, poet, any of that, you know, creative marketing, sales, that comes naturally. You have a lot of friends, you know, you know how to dress well, etc. Right brain is very strong. Left brain is for those who are good with mathematics, accounting, right? Things that require analytics, analytical mindset, intel intellectual mindset. So that's the left brain. And some people have both sides of the brain working beautifully. And one person I uh, appreciate uh, who has that is Vijay Shekhar Sharma, Paytm's uh, CEO. He really has both sides working very well. He can sing well. He can also do business well. He understands finance well. He understands uh, people's skills very well. Uh, you know, all of that working, but that's rare to find. If you are that, it's fantastic. If you're not that, get a co-founder who is like Steve Jobs. He was a right brain guy. He could not code, you know, but he got Steve Wozniak to code. So Steve Wozniak was his left brain and Steve Jobs was the right brain. And together they built Apple as a company. So it's not a bad thing if you're just, you know, good with one part and not good with the other. It's totally okay. Just find somebody who is what you're not and become co-founders and build it together. Start with the problem. People think startups are about ideas. That's not true. Everybody has idea. In fact, being human is having ideas. Every human being walking down the street has an idea how to solve a problem. So if you are you know, having an idea and you think that's what makes you unique and you can go to investors, trust me, everyone has ideas, including the investor. Why should they pay you for the idea? But what makes a difference is when you know there's a problem, a problem faced by hundreds and thousands and lakhs of people, and they are willing to pay to solve that problem. For example, transportation, we all face issues with cabs. <clears throat> And as soon as Ola Uber came in, we are like, huh, okay, charges a little bit more, but it's reliable. You can use an app 
and some car you know is there to pick you up you know what time they'll come how much they would charge you where what time they'll take you of course there are uh, accidents and other things happen problems happen but the point is it's a much better system and it has replaced color pilot cabs completely replaced color pilot cabs right so what does it say that means if there is a need if there's a problem and you solve it people are willing to pay for it right but the need has to be strong enough need it cannot be a want oh i like this no it has to i need this this is a uh, so transportation um accommodation food health these are needs people cannot live without them so if you see the the billion dollar companies they are all in that on those spaces where there is a need right and when you when you cover a need you succeed so start with the problem according to the vedic understanding a problem is something that no one wants but everyone has to face it and no one can avoid it and as you build measure learn you know as you go through your uh, ideation process you building a prototype you measuring it with the customers people are like hey i like it no i don't like it oh you suck oh this is terrible nobody will buy it you know you're learning throughout the process you build you measure you learn and you build again you build again you build again till somebody says oh you know what i'll pay for this this is very unique very cool right and so you fail fast you succeed faster that means people will tell you the first customers the first uh touch with a potential customer is going to be negative people are going to say oh this is not good there's so many products like these you're too expensive you you know you, you're not up to the mark that's great you learn what is not up to the mark how can i make it better how can i make it up to the mark and you build you test you learn so if you're building an app or a website show it to your friends get their feedback let them criticize you with that criticism build test learn and that's how you grow through the problem you fail fast you succeed faster and then you you set a goal for yourself i'm talking about goals right a million dollar goal let's say you break down that goal you break down that goal further now there's a big secret that nobody's going to tell you right uh, maybe all the speakers here would tell you today because they have actually gone through this because when you break down that massive million dollar goal into 500 people over 12 months you know it becomes achievable 167000 dollars uh, 167 is not hard uh, or 5000 people paying 17 dollars a month for 12 months right so whatever that is now you know this is the goal uh, these many people customers i need paying this much amount of money over this period of time now break down the 12 months into days you know and then you know oh ah this is how So when you break it down then you know if you're on your track or you're not on your track just like a GPS right on a GPS you know you're moving towards a destination or not or you order somebody something on Zomato you know your Zomato food is coming or not right how far they are 30 minutes 5 minutes similarly with your life also you have to do that same exercise that you break down this massive goal into smaller goals and every day you can measure are you moving towards a monthly goal or not are you moving towards a quarterly goal or not are you moving towards a yearly goal or not right and accordingly you measure your success as you go through and all in this process it's really helpful to have a mentor right uh, i have been very very fortunate to have the best uh, people in the industry from around the world to mentor me and it has saved me 5 minutes of conversation has saved me months of hard work you know when i was going to china as a teenager to manufacture my first product it was mind blowing you know there's so many choices but i did ask somebody who had been doing business with china for the last 20 years and i said hey joe tell me what do i need to ask what do i need to look for how will they try to cheat me and what should i be looking out for and he told me look for this ask these questions and these are the options and when i went through they were blown away to see a 19 year old asking all these hard questions and exactly i knew what i was looking for and so i got to crack the best deal possible and it saved me a lot of time and money so get a mentor it will save you time it will save you money and headache somebody who has been there 
done that and can help you get there. Decide with clear vision. It's important to have clarity of vision because generally what happens is you are like, I know where I'm going, but I'm a little confused. I don't know, no, yeah, you know. And that happens because you have no control. You've lost control of your mind. You've lost control of your life. So meditation is a very, very important aspect of any high performing individual, whether you're a CEO or a politician, meditation is something that most high performing individuals do. The reason why is because if you look at it, everything needs control. I've given three examples, you know, video game. If you don't have that controller, it's not going to be fun. You're not going to play the game because you have no control over the situation. You know, the car racing car might just go and hit some tree and you're just watching that. Right. Or if you don't, if you're driving a real car, you don't have a steering wheel. You have no control over the car. You'll go straight and you hit something. It's on its own or a dog. If you have a dog, you have a leash, you have control over it. You can make sure it stays with you or else a dog runs away somewhere and you don't know. Same thing happens to us, right? Our mind, mind goes here and there. I want to watch Netflix. I want to do this. I want to waste time with uh, Instagram reels or TikTok or this and that. And we are going, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm not saying you shouldn't have fun. You should have fun, but if you have a focus, if you have a destination, if you have a goal, then that goal is a priority. And having fun is also important. Do it, but within certain time. So that requires a level of control, controlling the mind that, you know what, now is the time for working. Now is the time for having fun. Now is the time for sleeping. Now is the time for eating. You cannot let your mind just run wild because then it's like watching your video game crashing right? And you cannot do anything, no joystick, no control. So control over your life is what makes you successful. So you can go in the direction you want to go to. Hit the pause button. Whenever you feel like, you know, your mind is taking over, hit the pause button. And in Bhagavad Gita, uh, or rather Katha Upanishad, which is referred to in the Bhagavad Gita, it gives us an example. Uh, you see the five horses? These horses have five senses, they represent five senses. S sight, smell, hearing, touch, taste. And then there is this rain. This is the mind controlling, right? The intelligence controlling the senses with the mind. And the soul is you, you are the passenger. There's the chariot, which is the body. That's your life basically, right? You're going through. so day and night each wheel represents day night you're moving towards death right you're moving towards death but if the horses are all over the place get works what chariot goes here and there no control the strong control with intelligence is strong so it's defined mind and intelligence the difference between the two it's like this mind says you're looking down from burj khalifa and you're like wouldn't it be nice to jump Intelligence says, hey, when you fell from bed, that hurt. If you jump from here, you might die. Don't do it, right? And based on that, you decide not to do it. So where does that come from? Intelligence knows this from past experience or the experience of others. You know people who have committed suicide from jumping from tall buildings. So your knowledge feeds your intelligence. Your intelligence strengthens your mind and your mind controls your senses. I mean, your senses are controlled, you can control your life. So let's do that one more time. Knowledge feeds your intelligence. Intelligence controls the mind. The mind controls the senses. And when the senses are controlled, you have control over your life and you can take it to the direction you want to go rather than what the mind is telling you to go. And mantra has a role to play here. In Sanskrit, the word mantra, manaha trayate iti mantra, or that which releases the mind, frees your mind, right? So mantra has special, special mantras of special power. Just like, you know, there's the Western concept is affirmations, right? If you read books like Think and Grow Rich, they'll talk about affirmations. You are amazing. You're this, you're that. You look at the mirror and you say, same way in Vedic, of course, much before all that the Western world knew, the Vedas talk about mantras. You know, they're, they're basically are cleansing your mind. 
just like you take a shower for the body, you clean your body. It cleanses your mind from anxiety, stress, uh, negative thoughts, you know, all kinds of things. You've gone through a breakup and you hate everyone. You know, if you're a woman, you hate all men. If you're a man, you hate all women. You know, all of that is happening. And mantra meditation, you know, it helps you clean all of that garbage. So as a soul, you're seeing the world through these lenses. I'm rich, I'm bad, I'm woman, I'm wise, I'm not so wise, I'm intelligent, I'm not intelligent, etc. And as per how you see the world, you make action and you get a reaction. You do something, you get something. And by doing so, the next step and the next step. So you, a lot of times what happens, people go through breakups and then they say, oh, I'm going to build my body. I'm going to be so successful. What she missed, right? That's a very positive aspect. The negative is I will start drinking. I will start uh, drugs. I'll do this and that and I'll destroy my life. Sometimes people even commit suicide after breakups. So that's the negative side of things. The positive side is you build yourself. So how you see the world defines how, what actions you take. Based on the actions you take, the reaction you get. The kind of food you eat, the kind of exercise you do, you get your six pack abs and you look good and you attract more people or you become uh, you know, fat like me and eat too much and uh, you know, become unattractive. So it's, it's up to you, right? It's how you see the world, it's who you're surrounded with, who your friends are. Accordingly, you see the world and accordingly action and reaction happens. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it says, Krita Dhayato Vishnu. You know, in Satya Yoga, they would do dhyana on Vishnu. Thousands of years, they would meditate. Treta Yadato Makhaya, they would do fire sacrifice in Treta Yoga. Dvapar Parichayam. In Dvapar Yoga, they would do all kinds of temple worship. right? And Kalautad Hari Sankirtana. In Kali Yoga, the recommended method is Hari Sankirtan. And I was actually speaking this to an audience, a Muslim audience in Dubai, and we were discussing about Islam as well. And there, you know, Allahu Akbar, you know, name of God is glorified. Just like Harinam, you know, name of Lord Hari, or name of Allah, or name of uh, Christ, or name of Buddha, right? Chanting the name in any religious uh, spiritual movement is considered the holiest thing, right? And, and so it's not just one religion saying it, it's, it's all, it's universal. And, and uh, people agree to that. So the mantra of chanting the names of, of Lord Krishna or Lord Ram or, or, or Allah or whoever it might be that you consider God is, is a way of awakening that soul, feeding that soul and bringing out, igniting the spiritual consciousness that gives you an, a competitive advantage over others because when the, the inner consciousness is awakened, the spark, the divinity within you allows you to do things that you never thought was possible. And you know, in, in Kali Santana Upanishad, that is called the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And in other places you'll find, you know, in other traditions and other things, you'll find other mantras. But the point is, it is ma mantra meditation that really, really helps you. So do this kind of meditation chant certain mantras and you will see your stress anxiety goes down your focus is clear on what you want to achieve and eventually you you get what you want you're happy not just financially uh, because i know many rich people who are not happy their wives are cheating on them their kids don't talk to them besides when they need money but you will be actually fulfilled from within from inside and from outside material and spiritual success but you need to prioritize right uh, there's a lot of in decision making, there needs to be priority. So I call it about success mantra. So it's not just the mantra of chanting uh, Vedic mantras, but also uh, doing acting in a certain way. What is urgent versus important, right? Uh, it might be urgent that your phone is ringing. How many times have you been in a conversation with somebody important and your phone is ringing and you pick up the phone and you start talking? And that tells the other person, I'm not important. That person on the phone is important. Right. So what is urgent? What is important? This grid kind of helps you understand that today I don't have so much time uh, to go in the details. But uh, you can see in this graphic format, the things that are not urgent, not important, ignore them. Right. Just drop it. It's not worth it. Things that are important, but not urgent. Right. Uh, 
take your time doing it. It's important. So you should have enough time. Don't wait for the deadline. When the deadline is right there, then it's urgent and important. Definitely get it done or else you will uh, not get uh, you know, your deserving outcome. The point is, but do you really need to be pushing yourself to the the highly urgent and highly important quadrant. If you plan ahead of time, you don't have to rush it. Now you will say, oh, lethargy and this and that, you know, yeah, all of that is there. But the lifestyle of meditation really helps you figure out uh, in such a way that you don't wait for the last minute. You have the right motivation. When you have the compelling vision that I talked about initially, that I want that car, I want that house, I want this kind of a lifestyle, I want to earn this much amount of money, that million dollar or $10 million or a billion dollars is clear to you. So you have that motivation that every day I have to work towards that goal. Then you don't live this life where you, everything is at the deadline. You plan ahead of time. Every day you're moving towards that goal. You know, there's important, I'm not going to get into all this. I'm going to move on. There's a lot of, I can talk about, uh, Right choice versus popular choice. This is something I want to touch on. Uh, a lot of times you will see, especially when you're young and you have, you don't you have, you haven't seen the world enough. There's a lot of things that people will say that is popular. Sharma ji ka beta karta hai. Aap niu, aap kyun nahi karoge, right? Everybody does it. You should do it too. But there's a right choice versus a popular choice. A popular choice is not necessarily the right choice for you because what is right for you might not be. Uh, right for others. And what is right for others might not be right for you. We are all uniquely gifted by God. We are all unique individuals. And you know what? Being a photographer, you can be super successful. Being a, a YouTuber, you can be super successful. Being an actor, you can be super successful. Being a startup entrepreneur, you can be super successful. Being a yogi, you can be super successful. So your path is your path. It's your unique path. Nobody has a right to tell you. And you should not make your decisions based on Acha, sab yaha par ja rahe, to mujhe bhi yaha jana No, you figure out what is the right path for you, not the popular path. Because popular path matlab, everybody becomes an engineer. Whether you're a monkey or whether you're a fish, everybody is an engineer. Everybody has to take the same path and do the same thing. Ratta maro or degree low or you know, guess what 70 percent of india's engineers are not worth being engineers they're not qualified to be engineers they can hardly uh, uh, do anything that an engineer should be doing that's what happens when you follow the popular stuff right so don't be sharmajika beta be your own self do the right choice and what is right for you uh, when you're making decisions always look out for your friends look out for the other side don't see everybody as your enemy it should be win-win, right? You win something, somebody else also should win. And together you can win in a larger way. Win loses when you want to win and others should lose. And that's not nice. Uh, that won't last you. People won't like you. If they don't like you, they won't want, want to work with you. Or, uh, you know, whether it's today, it's college projects, tomorrow it's work, day after it's marriage, right? Uh, if you always are the guy who should win and everybody else should lose, that doesn't work. And lose win works only in, in loving relationships where, uh, hold on, there is a Bollywood quote, right? There was a Bazigar uh, quote. So, so that, that's basically in loving relationships where it's, uh, you know, sometimes we get lost about, uh, should I win the argument or should I break the heart, right? Because winning the argument might mean I'm right, you're wrong proven, but that breaks the other person's heart. Better, you know what, you're right. And I'm wrong, that's fine. Are you happy? If that makes you happy, I'm happy. That's a big, bigger win for me. And that's what happens in a caring relationship. But that sometimes can be also in an abusive relationship where you're always losing and the other person is always winning and that's wrong, right? When that happens, stand up for yourself, have your self-esteem, have your spinal cord. Don't let other people bulldoze you. And I'll end with this, the most fundamental need of every living being is love and be loved. So you know, it doesn't cost you any money to appreciate someone, to be respectful, do some act of kindness. So be loving and kind, not only to humans, but also to animals, to trees, to the environment, to mother earth. Be nice, love wherever you can, whoever you can. People will, you will attract the right people that way. You know, what you want is what you will get when you give it out there. If you want to be loved, share love, give love to people unconditionally. And you will see, you will also be loved, respected, appreciated, and people will do kind things to you as well. 
in the Bhagavad Gita, it ends this way. It says, wherever there's Krishna, the master of all mystics, wherever there's Arjuna, the supreme archer, there will also certainly be opulence, victory, extraordinary power, and morality. So there's nothing lost. Wherever there's Krishna and Arjun, that means when you follow the words of Bhagavad Gita, the principles of Bhagavad Gita, you will have victory, you will have morality, not victory by hurting others, but victory by doing the right things. You will have extraordinary power and you will have opulence. That means money, name, fame, all of that. If you, if you have desire for it, you will get it. But do it the right way, not by hurting others. Do it now, no excuses. Make it a habit to win every day. Little things every day adds up, just like I said at the beginning, and empower your dream with deadlines. Set a date. This is when I want that car. This is when I want to launch my startup. This is when I want to raise funding. This is when I want to uh, uh, you know, get married. This is when I want to have my first house. This is when I want to buy my parents the first gift, et cetera, et cetera. Empower your dreams with deadlines. That way you will know, back calculate and figure out how much you have to work every day, little by little to get to your dream. Think big, start small grow slow, then grow fast. After eight businesses, this is my learning, is you think as big as you want, start small with the low-hanging fruit. Whatever you can do in college, you're in there you're with friends, do something small, create something, build something, sell something, right? Something small, learn from it, build, test, learn, grow slow, make mistakes, don't repeat the mistakes. Once you figure it out, then grow really fast. Take an investor's money and grow out your business, grow out your startup, grow out your nonprofit, grow out whatever you're doing, right? Grow your life. I wish you all success. And if there's any way I can help you, you can always contact me at kolkataventures.com slash contact or WhatsApp my assistant. He will schedule a time with me. You can also watch uh, the videos. I have made more than 200 videos just for you in case I die quickly. All the things I know is there in the form of one minute, two minute videos on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Roy. I highly recommend you go watch them, subscribe to them. It come, it's about Bhagavad Gita. It's about startups. It's about life. Things that I have figured out how to hack life is there for you in one minute videos. Go watch them. And there's any questions, comment there and I'll respond to you. And if there's any personal question, you can ask me on Instagram. If you are looking for internships and things like that, connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm the only person in this world with the name Avello Roy. So find me, Google me, uh, and any way we can connect, any way I can help you as elder brother, I'm there for you. Thank you very much. I'll end it here. And if you have questions, uh, I'll be happy to take them now. Thank you so much, sir. We got to learn and know about so many things. So can we proceed towards question and answer session now, sir? Sure. Yes. Sir. So the first question from the participants is, how did you start your entrepreneurial journey at the age of 19? And what was the inspiration behind it? I already shared that, but I guess you came a little late. But uh, my inspiration was solving people's problems. You know, I uh, growing up uh, in, in a family where my mother was a politician as well as a social worker. One thing I realized is there's two ways to solve a problem. One is power, one is money. Uh, I was told not to join politics, so my only option was entrepreneurship. And so with technology, I have been working to solve problems. Uh, my first product was about uh, solving the problem of cyberbullying and pedophiles and protecting children uh, against you know, uh, people who want to harm them when they're on social media. So this time Facebook had just you know, come up and MySpace was going down and kids wanted to be online and uh, it was not safe. You know, so creating that uh, environment for them, creating a product that was just like Apple Watch 10 years before Apple Watch, and it was very, very successful. So the point is, that's how I got started, solving a social problem. And thereafter, one by one, I have been solving problems with technology. And that's what entrepreneurship is to me, is solving life's problems. And I started at the age of 19 because I didn't know if I would live too long. I still, uh, I've always, you know, I, I don't think I'll live hundred years. So if, if it happens tomorrow, I should have no regrets when I'm dying that, you know, yesterday I did everything I could in my capacity to live my life to the fullest. So that's why I started at 19. Didn't want to wait till I graduate. Okay, sir. Uh, the next question is, what is your message for the youth from you? 
<laughs> I already gave you a, a, a message. Think big, start small, grow slow, then grow fast. Okay, sir. The next question is how to select the right vendor for your startup. Right, mentor for your startup. Right mentor, yes. Uh, so mentor, uh, I recommend somebody who is who is where you want to be, and who has been where you are today. So today, if you are struggling, you're in your, you know, teenage and whatnot. So that mentor has been there. So they know how hard it was being you. And they are, they've survived all of that and are where you want to be. Find such a person on LinkedIn or Quora or Twitter or wherever else, connect with them, ask them for five minutes and get that time. 10 people will say no, one person might respond. And, and that's, that's all you need. Krishna, next question. Okay. Yes, sir. Sorry, actually, there was some internet connection issue. So, sorry. No worries. Uh, yes, sir. So, next question is What is your key to uh, make a successful business? I gave a whole presentation on it. <laughs> Decision making is the key to making a successful business and people. Uh, that makes all the difference. Who you hire, who you, who is your co-founder, your founding team, right? Because you can have a great uh, problem that you're solving. I didn't say idea. I said problem. Note in my presentation also I mentioned idea doesn't matter. What matters is a problem faced by enough people who are willing to pay to solve the problem. So your problem is strong. You have a good uh, co-founders starting the uh, business, and you have a product market fit. So you you can figure out that, you know what, my product really solves the problem of the market where people are willing to pay for it. And you have the team to execute on the product, sales, marketing, operations, finance, all of that, right? How do you do that? Oh, that sounds like a lot. Well, start with your friends. Start with your college friends, have professors helping you, and then have people like me who are entrepreneurs already to guide you through the process to how to transition from a student entrepreneur to a real entrepreneur to uh, being a businessman and, and, and beyond, right? So get a mentor, they'll work you through. But team is the most important part in this uh, problem that you're solving and, and the rest follows. I can be telling you 10 more things, but the rest follows. Okay, uh, the next question is why people are so often attached with the word success with money is looks like kind of obsession with this term. I mean, what's wrong with that? Right? What's wrong? Why not? Why not money? Why not obsession with success? If you don't, if you're not obsessed, you won't get it to be honest with you. Uh, you're obsessed about Netflix. You will watch all the best shows out there. And if that's what your life's goal is, go for it. If you're obsessed about success, you will get success. If you're obsessed about money, you'll get it. You have to have the obsession uh, to get. Obsession means a very, very strong will, a strong need for something. That means anywhere you look, you're looking for opportunities, right, to, to succeed. You're looking for that opportunity for what will get me to that point I want to get to. And there's nothing wrong with it. In fact, that is the way uh, to make it happen. Of course, that doesn't mean you elbow your friends out of the way, you hurt other people in the process, but you need to have focus on success to get success. If you take it lightly, you know what? You'll be average. Krishna, you're muted. Sorry, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So the, thank you so much for the interactive session and your valuable time. And thank you so much for whoever are uh, here in our session. So thank you so much. All right. All the best, everyone. Stay connected with me on Instagram. And I look forward to hearing from you. Yeah. Take thank care. you so much. Sir.